Good morning, Faith family and friends. It's so good to be with you this morning. I missed you last week when I was stuck in isolation. I'm so happy to be here with each of you. Welcome into our church sanctuary, whether you are here physically present or you're worshiping from home. Uh, we are Plymouth Congregational United Church of Christ, and we're so happy to be together this morning to celebrate our church on Stewardship Sunday and to bring our gifts before God. You likely received a pledge card in the mail. Linda is going to give you a couple more announcements about that in just a couple minutes. But for now, bienvenidos. My name is Reverend Sarah M. Holland, as most of you, I think, know. And we are so happy that we are considering Christ's love, considering where we're going forward as a church community, as individuals, but more importantly, collectively this morning. We want to invite people who are willing to sign our attendance pads. I believe we're going to pass those out. And go ahead and put your name down, even if you're a member. It's helpful for us to keep attendance, just so we know how often folks are coming. We're appreciative of all the people who are helping us with worship this morning, especially our tech people, our staff, our liturgist Wayne Martin. You may have noticed that masks are optional at this point. However, what you probably also know is that the numbers are kind of high. COVID is not fun. So as much as you're willing, put that mask on, especially if you're singing or if you're near really tiny people, right? And then I don't believe we have coffee hour today. Oh, we do. We do have coffee hour. So when you're in coffee hour, lots of coffee, lots of coffee. So if you're still at home, you might want to come to church for that reason, if nothing else. Maybe you don't want to hear about stewardship, but check out the coffee. Um, so check that out. Uh, if, if you're down there, be cautious. Don't physically approach people with hugs, unless if you're sure that they want a hug, okay? Just not everybody maybe wants one, so be aware of that. And then there's a lot of stuff in the announcements as far as the written announcements, so check it out. There's an insert in the bulletin. You can take that home and put it on your refrigerator, and it will remind you T.J. Wheeler performs blues, jazz, all kinds of stuff. You can read about it, put it on your fridge, and then show up right after or right for the service on June 12th to welcome him and to celebrate. It's Pride Sunday. It's Choir Sunday. That's a big day for us, so just show up to church that week. Uh, next week, we're having a collection, a special collection for Ukraine, so we want to just highlight that, make sure you know if you want to write a big check for Ukraine, that's a good time to do it. We're going to make sure that I, I think 100% of those proceeds are going directly to Ukraine, to World Central Kitchen. Uh, David is going to make an announcement about our beautiful organ console. Good morning. Um, as you know, we are blessed with many, many wonderful people in this church. And one of those people is Dale Mosier who just completed this incredible facade around the organ console. Uh, he built that out. It is structurally sound. It is not going anywhere. And it is absolutely beautiful. And I just want to publicly thank Dale for just such a magnificent job. And the attention to detail that he put into that is just remarkable. So thank you, Dale Moser. I also want to bring attention that in the five Sundays of July at 5 o'clock, we have a, an incredible lineup of organists who are coming. It's during the New Hampshire Music Festival month. Uh, so we have our Tuesday night chamber series concerts here and then Friday afternoon at five o'clock, five weeks of, of organ recitals here. And so I hope you put those on your calendar. More will be coming out about that, but I just wanted to bring it to your attention now. Thanks. That's Thank awesome. you, Sarah. Thank you so much, David. Those concerts are gonna be wonderful and you can't have the excuse of not knowing when and where because it's five Sundays in July at five o'clock. So it's very easy to remember, so we expect to see you at at least one of them, hopefully all five. And Del Mosher has spent countless hours here, so if you see him in person or on Zoom or in a phone call, just thank him. Uh, I would guess 80 hours at least within the past couple of months, so thank you, Dale. Linda LaPrad is going to make an announcement about Stewardship Sunday. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Linda LaPrat of the Finance Committee, and we wanted to give you an update on our Looking Forward for the Future with Hope, our stewardship campaign. And this is for our fiscal year that begins July 1st, so we're very happy that it's been running along this nicely. 
So as an update, as of yesterday, we received 22 pledges, totaling $66,650. This is about a little more than a third of the way towards our goal of $180,000. For those of you who have submitted your financial commitment to the church, we thank you. If you haven't yet pledged, we ask that you prayerfully consider doing so. This is going to help, obviously help the mission and ministry of the church. And for your convenience, I have put in some pledge cards at the end of each of the pews. So if you'd like to fill one of those out, and you can put it in the collection plate as it comes around, or you can hand it to Ann Thurston or myself after the end of the service. If you have any questions regarding your pledge, again, Ann and I will be more than happy to talk to you after the service. So for all that we have accomplished together, we look forward to a future with hope. Thank you. Thank you so much, Linda. The finance team has been working really hard alongside council to make hard decisions and decide important things about the future of our church. So we just invite you, get involved. You know, it's sometimes it's not about an amount, but it's about participating, right? Uh, prayerfully, like Linda said, consider what you can contribute and be a part of it. Ann Thurston, our wonderful treasurer, found a four-leaf clover this morning outside of our church. I don't know which of you are superstitious, but I think that's a good omen for us. If there are issues on Facebook this morning, we do ask that you tell us. However, we ask that you do so in a polite way centered around Christ's love. So make sure your comments are kind and pay testament to our public witness. You can learn more about our specific UCC designations on the front side of our bulletin. We are a just peace church, so during times of wars, we proudly proclaim, we say, peace is possible. Again, thank you for being here. Bienvenidos. Spring greetings to you. Whether you like chicken wings or tempeh bacon, welcome to you. Ye sea que te sientas cansado o emocionado. Bienvenido a ti. If you've been enjoying gardening, hiking, or just sitting on a patio, sitting there, waiting, welcome. If you're a believer, a questioner, or a questioning believer, welcome to you. As we enter into a space for contemplation and reflection, we want you to know that no matter where you are physically, God is surely present with you. Let's listen for God's voice in our introit. Please join me in the call to worship printed in your bulletin. We are to come with our gifts. Let us remember that miracles are in store for us. Let us seek the welfare of the whole world. Our joy will be multiplied and our sorrows will be held by the divine spirit. On God's path, we will find ways to serve neighbors walk in love. Perhaps we have felt that we are in exile, but our home is here in the house of God. We come with our gifts. These should be given in love. Surely God will hear us, so says the sacred text. 
Please join us in hymn number 66 in the red hymnal for the beauty of the earth. We will be singing verses one through three and then number six. to you. We seek peace as we greet one another. On Sunday morning, we seek to give love to each other. If you're at home, you can send a note that says, peace be with you, written down in a text message on the Facebook messaging icon there. You can also write or type, you are called to God's path. You are called to God's path. God's love surrounds you. If you're here in worship, we invite you to greet one another with signs of God's peace. If you don't want someone approaching you, just throw up that peace symbol. That's sign for peace, and please stay away from me. So go for it. Peace be with you. Please greet one another.
want to invite us to slowly make our way back to our seats. You don't have to move slowly. You could move quickly as long as you're careful. We might have a raucous coffee hour today. I invite you to join me in the order of service as you wish. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Please join me in the unison gathering prayer. Spirit of truth, we come with gratitude for the love and life that you have placed before us. Let us see ways to serve the church in your will, so that hearts may be healed and we will live out our call. We are told to love one another, and this call is truly a challenge. Let us dive deep in meditation and reflection so that our hearts may be truly changed for greater good. Bring us to your hope once again that we might carry it to all the world. We pray all this for love's sake. We often dwell on the problems in front of us, such that we cannot see the possibilities of the future. Let us discern God's path in word and song. We seek out ways to live with commandments of love. Grant us the grace of your gospel word. Give us peace in the call to care for your world and church. Let us dwell in unity rather than uniformity. Hear us sing out for the promise of new life. to invite folks who are young or youngish to come forward so I don't know fifth grade or younger or if you just want to hear a story and look at the pictures that's fine too super thanks for coming up now do you want a spot they're kind of boring now I've had them around for a while I'm gonna put them up we're gonna bring these back out I think in two months or so <laughs> maybe beginning of the fall all right how are we doing can I, is it possible for you guys to come and sit kind of in front of me, like facing me? That would be really helpful, or I will scoot this way a little. Oh, oh my goodness. You know, the stole is great. I love the stoles, but they can make it really difficult for um, me to not trip over my own feet. We don't want that. So I have a story to read to you in Spanish. So if you speak English, you're going to have to listen with your eyes. Does that make sense? 
Okay, so you're gonna have to figure out the story by looking at the pictures. El Conejito Canuffle. El Conejito Canuffle. No hace mucho tiempo. Antes de que supiera hablar, Trixie se fue a hablar un recado con su papá. What are they doing here? Can you tell me, Tessa? They have laundry. They're headed to the laundromat. Trixie y su papá fueron hasta la esquina, cruzaron el parque. Thank you, parque. <laughs> Gracias. Pasaron frente a la escuela y entraron en la lavandería. Ah, they're doing laundry. Trixie ayudó a su papá a meter la ropa en la lavadora. Lavadora. What was Trixie doing there, Tessa? She wasn't really helping, was she? She was throwing the clothes all over the place. He's trying to work and she's just trying to play. Yeah. Hasta puso el dinero en la maquina. Entonces se fueron. <laughs> Para a una cuadra más o menos. Trixie se dio cuenta de algo. Trixie mira a su papá y le dijo. Agugu, yakayama, gu. Eso es as contesto su papá. Vamos a casa. Agugu, yakayama, gu. Dio Trixie otra vez. Yagugu, makaya, yakayama, yagu. What's happening here? She's sad, that's right, good job. Can be hard if you don't speak the language, right? Anda, por favor, no te pongas quisquiosa, dijo su papá, claro a Trixie, no le quedo más remedio. <laughs> y viero, berrio. Viero, thank you. Qua! Very sad, right? Se convirtió en un trapo. Hizo todo lo que para, lo que pudo para que se dieran cuenta de lo enfadada que estaba. Cuando llegaron a casa, su papá también estaba enfadado. Nada más abrir. La puerta, la mamá de Trixie preguntó, ¿Dónde está el conejito Canuffle? What's, what's the kid's face saying there, Tessa? He's mad. And where's this bunny, Canuffle bunny? Toda la familia corrió hasta la escuela y cruzaron el parque corriendo. Maybe it's in the laundry, we'll find out. Pasaran zubando por delante de la escuela hasta llegar a la lavandería. Thank you, lavandería. El papá de Trixie busco y busco y busco. Pero el conejito canuffle no estaba por ningún sitio. Very sad, right? Así que el papá de Trixie decidió volver a buscar otra vez. Hasta que... Hmm. 
Mi canapo, mi conejito, mi canapo. He was in the laundry. The bunny was in the laundry. Y esas fueron las primas palabras que dijo Trixie. So that says, and canapo bunny was the first words that the kid said. Because he was so sad that the bunny was missing. And what I want you to remember is that God will always look for you. Like the family looked for the bunny. Y busco. Y busco, um, it means looking for. Yeah, looking for. Y busco. And was looking and was looking. God will always look for you. So let's say a prayer. If you want to repeat what I say, you can. Dear God. Thank you for this story. Let us remember that you will always look for us. God, we thank you that you seek us out and be with us today as we walk on your way. Amen. Okay, we're gonna sing with we're gonna sing for you when you go. If you want to take do you want to take this down to church school? You could show Miss Jen. That might be nice. And I can get it later. The Old Testament lesson this morning is from Jeremiah chapter 29. The bulletin says it will be verses 1 through 12, but Sarah has asked that I read 7 through 14. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you, and do not listen to the dreams that they dream. For it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed will I visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. The gospel lesson this morning is from John chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. 
you will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. O oh, holy God, may the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and redeemer. Move in the space between words and hearing that your love might be made known to those most in need. <coughs> I wonder if we have any stock market nerds in the congregation this morning. Any? Nobody's interested in it at all? I don't believe that. Not one person is interested in the stock market. I, I find it to be very interesting. I don't really understand all the ins and outs of it, but I love listening to NPR's marketplace just to find out what's going on, try to, try to figure it out for myself slowly. We all have different relationships with money. These relationships are particular to each of us, specific to our own personal histories. No one of us is perfect in the realm of budgeting and money. Generally speaking, most of us either go one of two ways. We're either spenders, we like to spend, 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 maybe before we get it, right? Or we can be a little too thrifty. Financial advisors note that many people who save too much perhaps should be paying down debt or investing in some way. And we may not readily admit to being one of either of these. And we might sway back and forth between them. But I think we all land somewhere on the spectrum. One year we spend too much, perhaps, and then the next year, because of that, we shift wildly to not spending at all, to being far too thrifty, such that we're kept from living, we're kept from reducing our debt, we're kept from investing. So what do these points I make have to do with faith? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> it's a great question. Futures was meant to be a play on words this morning, the futures in the stock market, right? We're thinking about our future. We're thinking about our vision for our church when we think about stewardship. It's an important day. It's an important season for the life of the church. It's begin when we decide what type of church will we be. Will we be very, very spendy or will we be very, very thrifty? What will it look like over the next year, and how will it set us up for the next five years? Whether we like it or not, Stewardship Sunday is not just about visioning for the future. It's also about our collective relationship with money. The covenants that we've made, the promises that we've said to each other, and to the world around us. What are we committed to? What are the promises? What are the hopes that we've proclaimed? In addition to the financial pledges that we're thinking about for the upcoming year, our church now has to work really, really hard also to make good on what we've made for the current year, right? This will impact the course of our future because it will signal to our council and our finance team how exactly we're set up for the year upcoming. They have been hard at work, the finance and council has. They've been trying to discern the right steps to take for our whole congregation. I've been doing the same. I've been asking some of our key lay leaders really hard questions related to future, related to planning. The path before any nonprofit organization today is not an easy one. Our organization has been hit by the same struggles of others. Financial stressors, less income, more uncertainty. So in faith, in community, we have to consider the sacred text. 
and the hope that this will move us towards a dream. In verses 13 and 14 of the 29th chapter of Jeremiah, we hear a challenging divine word coming from this prophet. If you seek with me your whole heart, I will let you find me. I will restore your fortunes. Restore your fortunes. For a bit of historical context, we can know that this passage is from a letter of Jeremiah as the Israelites are in exile in Babylon. The prophet is declaring this good news that God will bring you back to this place from exile. And at the same time, cautions these folks not to believe false prophets who might announce quick return. Those false prophets are the same ones who might advocate violent rebellion. The implication of Jeremiah's word of caution is twofold. First, that violence isn't the way home. And second, that there is something God wants the Israelites to learn from exile. The latter of the two implications is the one to which I think we can most closely relate for our stewardship. Again, the scripture says, if you seek with me your whole heart, I will let you find me. What is this something God wants us to learn from the ways that we have felt like we're in exile? As a community, we continue to, and we have felt this odd sort of exile. The pandemic state continues. We continue to wonder, will more people show up back to church? At least to some degrees, the financial stressors that are a, a fiscal reality are also simply wearing on our hearts and minds. One affects the other. In addition to this, we might feel like the broader culture of Christianity leaves us in a sort of identity exile. Many Christians we often hear about in the news don't seem to carry the same morals as many of us. And in this way, we might feel like a sort of exile. We see people with guns who shoot at folks in the name of God oftentimes. And we ask ourselves why. There are questions that we can ask ourselves in community and as individuals this morning. What might God want us to learn from the ways we've been in exile, the ways that we feel like we're in exile when we see terror in our own backyards, in states that are next to ours? Have we been seeking God with our whole hearts? Have you been in exile? Perhaps you are estranged from a family member or a group of family members because you do believe differently than them. Perhaps you've not been able to travel to see people you love because of the pandemic. Or perhaps you are different in some way that keeps you from finding community. If you felt like an exile or an outsider in the past, and that is one reason you are a part of our congregation, I would definitely challenge you, pledge or contribute today. It does not get said enough, but belonging is one of the most important types of being a human. People who are hurt in the world, people who bear arms to hurt other people, people with guns who shoot at others, they are hurt. For some reason, they have gotten the message that they are not enough and that they do not belong. And so communities like ours have to continue to reach out to show that there is love and that there is hope. We proudly proclaim that all people are welcome here. We may ask ourselves, do we still matter? Are we still relevant? Look at one another. Look at folks who are showing up new, new people in our church. It may not be a lot, but it's some, and that means a lot. People with deep faith may join our church. People who have huge doubts may join our church. People with addiction, people who have no biological family 
People who have hurt others are welcome in our church, right? We don't say violence is okay, but we open our communion table, we open our chancel physically to everyone. Our congregation has been in exile before. Many of us know that in the early 1980s, our building sadly burned down. I understand that while our community was in this time of exile, there were many community partners throughout the Plymouth area who supported us, offered respite, gave us love through actions and support. It was a time of collective exile when we rose to the occasion and we were challenged. So as we pledge and give today, we might think about how the people of the church in the 1980s, how they struggled. Our troubles today are fewer, and yet we might harness the resiliency of that part of our community in the early 1980s. If you seek me with your whole heart, I will let you find me. I can only imagine the devastation in the hearts of our congregants looking onto this property and seeing the building gone. The verses present a great paradox for us. On the one side, we find great liberation in seeking God on our daily path, individually and collectively. But on the other side, we know that some part of our spirits stray in our lives each day. It's true. And so perhaps rather than asking, how can I seek God with all my heart? We can ask ourselves, how can we seek God with more of our heart today? more of our heart this coming year than the following year. If you're a pragmatic person, you might be thinking, what the heck is the point as it relates to pledging? Again, I'm glad you asked. Some pastors suggest a really simple rule. If you gave a percentage of your adjusted gross income last year, the invitation is to simply increase the pledge by only a half of a percentage. That's not even a full percentage. Maybe it's manageable. If you did not pledge at all last year, then commit to making some pledge, even if it's $1 a month, even if you have to go to a trusted friend and say, hey, can you help me figure out how to get $1 a month to my church? If even that is a burden, I want to encourage you to submit a pledge card noting how you would most like to volunteer in our church. If you seek me with your whole heart, I will find you, I will restore you. That's what the gospel says. Excuse me, that's what the Hebrew Bible says. As I said to the children earlier, God will always be seeking us out, like the family looks for the little knuckle bunny. That's a stuffed animal in the story. God will always be seeking us out. God is waiting for us to seek right back to seek God's spirit. And so this day and this year, we work to dream big, to look, e busco, to search, so we continue to be a place of joy, a place of peace in a world of turmoil. And this is the way that we can live out God's love. At the very end of that story, the kid is so excited the kid is so excited it speaks its first words. My bunny, my knuffle. We will have our own proclamations as we find ourselves as being sought by God. As we acknowledge this, we can see ourselves on a path, not alone, but together as a collective group. We might end up gladly singing to ourselves as the kiddo yelled out, I belong, I am restored, in the family of faith. We will sing this so loudly in our hearts that we'll want to take this to the world, to everyone. For this is a part of our foundation. This is our future, and this is our faith. We invite you to join us in singing Help Us Accept Each Other from the Black Hymnal number 388.
ready. We invite you to join us in a time of prayer. We'd like to invite you to review the list of the folks who are um, in our bulletin, and also just to keep in mind that there's so many names and, and groups that we can't list, um, that are too, that is too deep for human words to write it down on paper. Uh, we are praying for the folks who are in Buffalo this morning, for all the law enforcement people, for all of the victims, as well as anyone who was close to them. Um, and we're praying that our legislative leaders would think about the number of shootings that occur in our country. And so we say, oh God, in your grace and mercy, hear your people at prayer. Sally, may I mention what you told me? Sure. Today? So we've been praying for someone named Valerie for a good amount of time. I want to say a year at least. Over a year. Over a year we've been praying for Valerie. And um, Valerie has gotten some good news in the past week. Um, she's doing a lot better. Everything she's dealing with is way more manageable. And so we're just prayers of gratitude for this good news for Valerie. So we say, oh God, in your grace and mercy, hear yeah, your people at prayer. prayer. Is there anyone here who would like to mention anything aloud? That's okay. Yes. The folks in Buffalo, yes. Again, we're praying for the folks in Buffalo. Um, there are two other communities that I heard listed in the news, but it's Buffalo and the surrounding towns. I can only imagine what they're going through. Oh God, in your grace and mercy, hear your people at prayer. Yes, Jen. Well, I can actually say it now. I have two brand new kittens. Yeah. Bonnie and Clyde. So for those of... So for those of y'all that didn't know, Jim did unfortunately have to say goodbye to this eldest cat about three weeks ago or yeah. so. Yeah, um, I just got two new kittens. So Betsy up. passed away, but the joy is that there are two new kittens running around at Jim's place named yes. Bonnie and Clyde. So <laughs> prayers of joy for Bonnie and Clyde. Thank you very much. Oh God, in your grace and mercy, hear your people, people have prayer. prayer. Anyone <clears> else? That's awesome. So Brian, we've been praying for Brian for a while, over over probably a year um, also. And good update for Brian, just doing better. They had a party yesterday, and so it's, that's a big joy. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, God, in your grace and mercy, hear your people at prayer. I want to just offer a thanks and gratitude for the Pollocks for uh, seeing to coffee hour today. Thank you for doing that. Let's turn to God in a moment of silence. God of hope, throughout our nation, we're concerned about rights, about equity, about safety, about our Constitution. God, your sacred word calls us to love each other and calls us to build up your foundation, our church, so that we might bring love to all the world. So, Holy One, let us be so bold so as to find ourselves as the, as the very ones who are called to work towards this repair. Let us know that we are the ones who are to name hope and peace in a world of pain and suffering. God, we come with gratitude for our church family and for the opportunity to work for your love as one place of spirit, one place of faith. We are grateful and glad for people in our congregation celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, new family members. God, let us turn to your divine presence in this time of war and trouble. We pray for every human life affected by war, and that includes us, God. We pray for the people affected by gun violence, again, ourselves included, and today we're playing praying especially for the people of Buffalo and the surrounding towns. God, we continue to pray for those suffering from the effects of addiction and mental illness. God, for those who are lonely, 
for those who are locked up and locked out of homes. God, as we pray for an end to white supremacy, for an end to violence, for an end to racism, we pray also for all public servants. God, let us find ways to be unified. Let us see our common humanity. We pray for all po political leaders. God, soften the hearts of leaders, O Holy One. Hold our sorrow. God, we pray that we will be compelled to care for your creation in our daily actions by reducing our consumption of plastic, by carpooling when we are able. God, we continue to pray for people who struggle to access the full range of reproductive health care. And God, we pray for those who are the victims and survivors of violence. We acknowledge that in many ways, we have been too idle as rights have been taken from those most in need. God, hear our repentance. Hold all of the people that we've named in voice today and know, God, that we understand the ways that you hold our, so our sorrows and our joys that are too heavy for us to name and for those we have forgotten. God, let us recall that we should not turn away from you and that we should not turn away from the pain of the world. And let us find ourselves as hidden by your great shadow, as comforted. Let us find ourselves in your refuge. Let us remember that much is required of those to whom much is given. So God, hear us now as we pray the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The people gather and disperse, gather and disperse. It's the way of life with God. As with the people, so with our money, gather and disperse. Gather and disperse. The more we gather, the more we can disperse. As with the people, so with our money, the gathering is good. By the giving, the sending out into the world, all is better, love is made known. It is the heart of everything. The offering will be gathered so that it may be sent, all for the sake of a future with hope. If you want to give online, you can go to uccplymouth.org forward slash give. And if you're going to send a check, please, oh, please make sure you send it to our post office box 86 rather than our physical address. As you give, consider this future with hope.
Please be seated. So we come together to take the gospel to the world, to bring God's hope. From kitchens and home offices, sidewalks and parking lots, we come. It's good to be present in many times and in many ways. In strange lands and familiar rooms, God has been revealed to us. Very good. What is brought to God today? Today, we bring a portion of our own. We bring pledges, we bring checks, we bring cash. And most importantly, we bring our hearts and hopes. We bring visions, commitments, and reminders of previous commitment. We present these to God so that the gospel might be carried to those throughout the Lakes region, New Hampshire, and throughout the world. Let it be so. Very good. I invite you all to join me in a brief prayer of blessing. If, you, if you're a spiritual, physical type of person, you can hold your hand out or hold them up while we pray this prayer. Gracious and loving God, giver of all that is good and true and beautiful and life-giving. God, these cards, this cash, these checks, they represent our lives, they represent our dreams. For us, a local church, these pledges we make are, are but tokens of the awesome gifts that have been given to us, and they are pledged in thanksgiving for all we have received, for all, all we have been inspired to be, and for all we are challenged to become. May these be the first fruits of all that we have, and not what we have left over, so that we may live out as closely as possible how you want us to. May we see these as our offering to you, sacred, holy, yet earthy, filled with possibilities. May we hold this image in our hearts and minds so that we will watch our offerings each week come to your table and so we can see our very selves being part of this offering. Let us always remember that we are a part of your divine plan. <clears throat> Amen. Linda, I just want to thank you for being the chair of the finance team. It's not an easy thing to do. And we also have a special thanks for Bev Newton, who I think she's not here today, but she's given us a plant. Uh, you gardeners help me. Phylax? Phylax? Phlox. Oh, thank you. It's just one. <laughs> That's very southern of me. Phlox. Phlox. This is, uh, last year we did begonias, but they were, there was too much sun on our property. The phlox is going to be planted somewhere on the property, in the ground, and it's going to remind us of our pledges for this current year. So thanks to Bev Newton. Thank you so much, Linda. And thank you to the team. Thanks. Please join me in the offertory prayer printed in your bulletin. Almighty and gentle God, you have given us the ability and opportunity to embrace one another and to serve your larger purpose. Let our offerings care for the world in the ways that you intend. Let these offerings move with grace, forgiveness, and hope that is born in your holy word. We pray that these gifts will strengthen your church so that love will be carried to all those in need. Amen. Please join in singing hymn number 377, Forward Through the Ages.
Today, this week, remember that God will always, God will always look for you. Remember, too, that you are called to seek God with your whole heart, with all parts of your life. So as you go tend the sick, share a meal, even if from afar or over the phone. If people ask you where you've come from, say to them that you're God's child and that you have seen love in Christ. Please be seated.